Dear audience, welcome to the show Power Chat. In today's episode, we are discussing Nepal-Finland relations and the Finland's presidency at the European Union. Joining us today, His Excellency Perti Antinen, Ambassador of Finland to Nepal. Please allow me to welcome him. Welcome to uh, the show, Your Excellency. Thank you so much. It's a great pleasure to be with you today. How have you been? Ah, good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it has already been a year that you joined Nepal as the ambassador of Finland. What is your observation about Nepal's development process and its diversity? Yes, um, it has been a bit less than a year. I arrived uh, September last year. So, but yeah, 10 months plus. And uh, so far so good, I think. Uh, it's been uh, my first time actually to, to work in this part of the world in in South Asian region. So this is a new region completely and Nepal of course a new country for me. Country number six to working actually. Um, and uh, in terms of development, actually development cooperation is the main reason why Finland is here actually in terms of our main activities is around development cooperation. But Nepal's development process, what I understand it based on my rather limited um, stay here and experience is that uh, I think Nepal lost one decade because of the internal conflict. I think that is something that um, has a big impact of what Nepal is today. But since then, uh, since the uh, peace agreement and peace deal, I think Nepal has taken great steps, you know, in terms of poverty alleviation, addressing the poverty issues. I I think that the past 10 years, you know, you've seen the absolute poverty going down from 40% to 20, a bit more than 20%. That's a good, good, remarkable uh, success. Do you mean that the conflict uh, delayed uh, Nepal's development process? Yeah, I, I think that's, that's must, that, that is the case, I think, because obviously when there is internal conflict, it has an impact on the economy, it has an impact on tourism. Uh, private, private, uh, you know, companies, their environment to work. I mean, stability, instability always ha has an impact on any country's development. Well, and how do you see the strait of relationship between Nepal and Finland? Um, I can maybe say that uh, Finland is a old and reliable friend of Nepal, uh, all weather friend. Um, uh, I think we, uh, our development cooperation relations date back to the 80s. Um, that is a good foundation for uh, for our relations. Um, I think when we started to work together with the Nepali government and other actors in 80s, it started to, let's say, lay the foundation of our sort of substance of our relations. Um, 1992. Uh, the Embassy of Finland was established here, so we have been here almost 30 years in terms of embassy. It's a long time for, for us, uh, at least, you know, and uh, during all those years, so many things has happen have happened, actually. And uh, now Finland has entered to uh, the European Union as its presidency. Finland's presidency yes. uh, for the European Union began last week. Uh, the 1st of July and that would go until uh, 31st December this year. What are your priorities as the president at the Union and how would that affect the process of development cooperation here in Nepal? Well, that's a very, very pertinent question. Um, first of all, uh, this is the third time that Finland is holding the presidency of the European Council, so EU presidency. Um, third time, um, it's very exciting times again, you know, so many things have happened in Europe and European Union. Uh, we have a new government, there were elections in April and the new government um, is actually emphasizing a few things that are also very relevant to our presidency. One is, for instance, the, the climate change, you know, the challenge to address climate change. This is, I think, one of the top priorities of, of, of Finnish present government. And it's one of the top priorities also uh, in, in our presidency program. Uh, nationally, Finland, we want to become a carbon neutral country uh, by 2035. 
This is a very ambitious goal for us. But this is what our present gov uh, government is committing to. We also want to see Europe to become a, uh, carbon neutral by 2050. Uh, you know, we want to be very ambitious. You know, we want to, for European Union also be ambitious in terms of addressing the climate change challenge and of course carbon emissions uh, within, within, within the Union. But of course this is not the only thing. Um, I think our present government emphasizes very strongly the uh, value-based foreign policy. Value-based meaning that uh, issues such as human rights, uh, rule of law, uh, abiding by the international rules and agreements, you know, I mean the, the, the whole global governance based on rules, based on agreements, jointly agreed agreements. Um, equality is one of the very strong issues, you know, we, we want to promote the equality, um, which is one of the values of Finland and maybe also parts of the uh, uh, elements for Finland's success in, in today's world. What are your preparations for implementing such ambitious plans, you know, addressing the challenge of, <coughs> of climate change and carbon emission and maintaining rule of law? How would you support the countries like Nepal? Um, this is this is uh, something which, of course, we have to start from from the national point of view. So Finland, we have to do what we actually are are uh, uh, how would I say issues that we are promoting. So we have to do nationally uh, address the na climate change, our, our own carbon emissions through different uh, means. Then we have to promote the same issues. Uh, in the European, why the Euro European uh, uh, fora, you know, in the European institutions, also the m meetings and what, uh, whatever actions European Union has taken. So this is what we are advocating for. And and in the end, of course, it's when it comes to European Union external relations. This is this is this is something which is now discussed in terms of, for instance, funding. M M. MFF its multi-annual financing framework is under discussion during our presidency. We hope that we get this discussion as far as possible. So we have to agree what is the, for instance, external funding framework? What is the European Union's joint um, uh, ODA, I mean Development Cooperation Funding Budget? This is something negotiations are ongoing and during our presidency we want to take those negotiations as far as possible. So this has very direct impact on, on Nepal, for instance. It's about what Nepal will actually get through European Union's budget. Your Excellency, could you also tell us uh, the most outstanding progresses that have taken place in connecting the people of two countries since the you know, formal diplomatic relations between two nations? This is something that it's a steady progress, I would say, you know. Uh, there are lots of peoples to peoples co contacts through the development cooperation, which is also includes the civil society organizations. We, it's not only government to government development co cooperation that Finland is financing, but it's also civil societies and so also twinning programs, programs that we are uh, funding. So it's quite a, I'm quite amazed how many Nepalese from the government, from the civil society and, and, and academia have actually visited Finland. So that's that's one of the good signs that there is this 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 cooperation which which is which is also uh, affecting people's people's life and and and, and, and uh, increasing knowledge of Finland in in Nepal. Um, from government to government level, I, I think. Um, just an example, we had a political consultations uh, in February, uh, our Director General for Asia and Americas was here to, to, to um, discuss the, uh, the relevant issues with uh, foreign affairs here, uh, representatives here in Nepal, and actually we agreed uh, on a mem memorandum of understanding on a regular political consultation. So so this is will now in future happen in a regular basis. Of course, we have had uh, consultations over development cooperation on a regular basis, and this will continue. Um, one thing also I should I, I would like to mention is that there's a growing Nepali diaspora in 
in uh, in in uh, in Finland. So every year, more and more Nepalese travel to Finland, usually for for studies. And uh, and uh, we have seen in our embassy that every year more and more young, very sort of enterprising, bright Nepali men and women uh, are going to to Finland to study. Some of them also stay in Finland. They might set up a uh, private company, for instance, and that also brings more, maybe, hopefully, more trade between Finland and Nepal, you know, in in, in future. Um, also, I, I could mention that um, maybe it's not so well uh, remembered anymore, but for instance, in mobile phone technologies, mobile phone networks, it was the Finnish companies who were in the pioneering here. Sonera, a Finnish company, former Finnish telecom, but Sonera Telia later on uh, uh, started the uh, uh, mobile networks here. Nokia was very, very, very powerful in the, in the some years ago here in terms of networking, but also, of course, the handset. So this is something that I think it's part of the our relations that there has been also this very substantial trade exchanges in the past. Also, maybe, maybe, maybe would like to mention that uh, even now, you know, it's not about only about development cooperation. It's hopefully also about investments. Our our investment authority, Fin Fund, Industrial Investment um, Agency, has invested here through some private equity funds. And also, very recently, um, we made an investment through IFC, International Financing Corporation, uh, to investing in the um, Upper Trisuli One hydropower scheme for like thir 13 uh, million US dollars, 13 uh, million US dollars. So just step by step, I think we will broaden our uh, uh, relations base. Really many interesting issues, Your Excellency. At the beginning, you mentioned about climate change and rule of law. Now you told about uh, the technology and hydropower and all. What are your specific you know, assistance plans here in Nepal, uh, working with both the government and civil society organizations? Um, yes, we have been in many sec sectors here in the past in Nepal, obviously. Um, and now, at the moment, we will focus and we are focusing uh, on three main sectors here. And uh, the biggest is the uh, water and sanitation, this is particularly focused on rural, very remote rural areas where where services are not created before. So water and sanitation. Then uh, education is very important um, area. Um, also in the past, uh, we support the government uh, SSDP program, program, which is the school sector development program, together with many other partners. And the third area is uh, gender equal equality and uh, empowerment of, of, of women, particularly from the economic point of view. Um, and of course, I, I want to I want emphasize that uh, we are everything is done together with other partners. You know, for instance, water and sanitation. The European Union is helping us with 20 million euros and. And schools have to develop a pro pro uh, program. It's fine as many, many other 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 partners also. So um, we are working together with other development partners and, of course, the government, and of course, then other stakeholders such as civil society uh, organizations. There are, if I'm not mistaken, 17 Finnish. Uh, uh, CSOs that are helping their local counterparts. So, so yes, it's it's quite a wide, a wide, wide range of of activities covered by that, and and uh, and there are other instruments that also Nepal can utilize. One is uh, kind of we have two kind of twinning uh, twinning uh, instruments. They're active here in Nepal. Just an example, we have through that uh, twinning instrument we have um, helped the. Um, uh, Finnish Meteorological Institute and the DHM, which is Department of Hydrology and Meteorology, here to 
to help the DHM to, how do I say, make better for, uh, weather forecasts and uh, and and helping helping the the whole data management systems there uh, provided some equipment. So I think those those kind of also other kind of how would I say uh, smaller projects can be very very useful actually uh, also twinning some of the Finnish universities Nepal universities so these exchanges I think are, they are more, more like technical transfer more like it's not about big money but it's I think also part of the whole bigger picture very very good interventions well uh, you talked about gender empowerment gender equality and empowerment issues long talked long discussed here in Nepal but you know uh, it's highly criticized on part of uh, the beneficiaries that mm. they have not received with the real benefits. You're working with different Finnish uh, civil society organizations here in Nepal and you are also uh, with the European Union as uh, the gender champion. What is your role, Finland's role here in Nepal, empowering or uh, maintaining gender equality? Well, I, I think, I think I'm first of all very proud and honored that I, I actually uh, took over the um, EU gender champion role, first of July. Um, I mean, first of July, just recently until the end of the uh, this year, yes, actually for six months, which covers also presidency time here in Nepal. Um, you know the. While we are promoting gender through our bilateral program and also uh, through our foreign policy as, as in, in general, uh, now I can also speak and promote that issue on behalf of the whole European Union. So it's, I'm really honored. It's, I'm very proud that I have this, this role. Um, so my, my duty and, 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 and job here is very, very, very clearly that I, I'm the one is speaking for gender issues, women's empowerment. On behalf of the European Union, I, have, I, I want to make visible what we are doing collectively as the European Union and of course what Finland is doing in terms of promoting gender equality issues. Um, I'm very committed to this and uh, I, have, I, I want to say and emphasize that the promotion of gender and uh, empowerment of women is not only for women it's also for men and women alike you know so it's important that we have not only women talking about that because it's the joint it's joint effort it's it's a mutual interest you know the promotion of g gender equality and i'm i'm very very much convinced that this is the this is a good course the reason being that I mean, I mean, Finland's success, relative success at least, is is, is because of, of the strong emphasis on equality. You know, I mean, in no country can fulfill its full po economic and development potential without the parti participation of both men and women into all walks of life. You know, when it, whether, whether whether it's economic uh, activities, business. Um, whether it's politics and, and and so 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 that that is the i think the ultimate goal is that we we have this inclusive participation of both sexes in 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 all all, all what's happening in in any country including now now nepal well any uh, insights in intensifying the long cherished relationship of two countries um <coughs> Well, I think what we have, I mentioned these consultations that we, we had, you know, I, I think what we mutually agreed between two governments is that we have to intensify high-level political visits, for instance. It has been a little bit quiet in the past two or three years, um, and um, I hope that we will see, um, for instance, Finnish Minister for Development and Trade here visiting because Nepal is one of the, our long-term long partner country in devel uh, development. Um, we could work maybe 
together with Nepal in international fora, I think the issues such as climate change, Nepal is very concerned and very active in the area, so we can join hands, Finland and Nepal, also addressing the, the uh, climate change when it comes to UN fora and, and, and others. Uh, peace and security agenda is something that we share. Nepal is very strong contributor to UN peacekeeping and Finland also. We have been there a very active uh, peacekeeper uh, nation and, and, and continue doing that. So my understanding is that, for instance, <laughs> when it comes to the army people, you know, Nepal and Finnish army personnel, they have also the personal relations based on those those um, those peacekeeping missions. And uh, maybe third area of interest is the rule of law. You know, I think this is something which, uh, let's say, rules-based global governance. I think countries such as Finland and Nepal, we are much more safe. We are much better off if we have a system which is rules-based, you know, something that there are agreements on well, coming for instance trade issues. There are agreements on those. Everybody knows what the, the rules of the games are. So, so we I think we jointly can try to promote also that that area of international cooperation. And of course, development cooperation issues, development challenges globally, also something that we we can work together in addressing those challenges. Well, often there is criticism <coughs> on uh, the you know uh, transparency issues of the resources utilized mm -hmm. within development assistance. How does Finland ensure that the resources coming from Finland here in Nepal, any means, are utilized with utmost transparency? Um. I can give you an example, which I am also very impressed when I'm doing field trips. In our water and sanitation uh, programs, that there are two major ones ongoing, one in the far west and one in provinces uh, four and five. We are talking progress pro projects that provide clean water to hundreds of thousands of, of, of Nepali citizens and rural Nepali, Nepalese. Um, and uh, we're talking of big numbers of beneficiaries through those programs. Um, what we are doing, uh, we're working together with uh, rural municipalities, um, very close cooperation, and of course the stakeholders like local communities. Everybody's putting some money into those water schemes. We are putting maybe something, then local communities, they are committed to provide something like their workforce, you know, they're digging, you know, the stitches where you put these pipes and so on. And the rural, rural municipalities and also government of Nepal g g puts in something. Then the plan is made for water and sanitation needs in certain community, based on needs assessments, you know, field visit and so on. Plan is made. It's very detailed. These and these families, these and these villages will get this and that and that. And then it's implementation. The water scheme is there. And then we carry out the public audit. Public audit meaning that all the receipts, every uh, plans, receipts, bookkeeping, everything is brought to people, put on the table. So people can check what was promised and what was delivered and what happened, what it was paid, who got what, oh, everything is transparent, fully transparent. So I participated one of those and it's a full day exercise and uh, I don't know, two, three hundred people there going through all these receipts, having this discussion with this project people and 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 outcome is that People knew what was promised and what was delivered. And I think that transparency, that transparency would be very welcome to, you know, not only within our programs, but whatever is happening there in the, in the, in the field in terms of service delivery. I tell you, I, well, think well I was I very impressed about Excellency, that. Excellency, many interesting issues, uh, but we are coming to the end of the show. Do you have anything to say to our audience that I have left to ask you very quickly? 
I had so many, so many issues in mind that I should have mentioned. But uh, one, one issue, I, I leave you a positive note. I, I think, you know, um, Nepal has impressed me a lot, you know, because of the diversity of, of this country is tremendous. It's not only biodiversity, biological diversity, you know, starting from Tarait, going to somewhere high, high mountains, you cross all these different zones of, you know, vegetation and, and wildlife. But it's also the cultural and linguistic diversity. That I'm, because of these programs that we're implementing, I have to visit very small remote places, driving like six hours to somewhere, and, and all of a sudden, different people, different languages, different costumes, you know. It's stunningly interesting, stunningly beautiful. Um, so Nepal should be very proud about that diversity and, and try to maintain it as, as far as possible. Take good care of the environment. Stop throwing these plastic bottles and waste all over, dumping waste to rivers. Respect that beautiful nature and biodiversity. And also from the cultural and linguistic point of view, see the value of different people, different thoughts, different concepts, because uh, if they are taken into the development processes, Nepal will be even more successful than, than they are now. Well, Your Excellency, thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Pleasure being with you. Thank you. Dear audience, time now to wrap up the show. Keep watching us. See you next week. Namaste.